Welcome to episode 68. Hey, this is John Lee Dumas of EO Fire, and you're listening to Who Did That Voice, where we take an in-depth look at voiceovers. Finally, warmer weather is here, and there is no better time than right now to book your vacation getaway with 3D Travel Company. Head on over to our website at www.whodidthatvoice.co and click the Book Now button on the left-hand side. They give a complimentary quote so you can get an idea of what it will cost to take your summer vacation. For a limited time, Who Did That Voice listeners can receive a Disney gift card for qualifying Disney and Universal trips, booked and traveled by the end of 2017. Hurry and book today so you can travel away. Welcome to Who Did That Voice, the show where we take an in-depth look at voiceover. And now, here's your host, Trenton Larkin. Hey, you guys, this is a special shout out to all my listeners around the world. Who Did That Voice is now heard in over 78 different countries, and I can't thank you guys enough. Here in the USA and abroad, thank you for listening to Who Did That Voice. Keep listening and sharing with your friends. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. Today's special guest has voiced a myriad of different characters, but the one that she is best known for is Poison Ivy from Batman the Animated Series. One little kiss, and dear Stephen was my slave. He was useful in signing my release papers and for supplying certain raw materials for my experiments. But the marriage was, well, a fake. And these mutations? Our children, Batman. Plant-based life forms enhanced with Stephen's DNA. They're not truly human. In fact, their lifespans are somewhat like certain rare flowers that blossom and die in a few days. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Who Did That Voice? Today on the show, we have Diane Pershing joining us. Diane, thank you so very much for joining me today. It is my pleasure to be here, Trenton. Well, it is my absolute honor and pleasure to have you joining me today. You mean a lot to me as growing up with you. You were such an iconic voice for me, and not just on the most iconic show, I think, of all times, but uh, which was Batman the Animated Series, by the way. But uh, you've, you've been a myriad of different voices from amazing shows across time and space. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Well, you know, just to name some of the amazing shows that you've done, Diane, uh, you know, you've been a part of shows like Justice League, Static Shock, Rugrats, Gotham Girls. Uh, of course, Batman the Animated Series is Poison Ivy, which is what you are probably most well known for in your career. Yep. Um, and then you were also on the new Batman Adventures. Um, you were on, um, goodness gracious, Defenders of the Earth, Darkwing Duck, Goof Troop. Um, but, you know, besides all these wonderful shows that you've been a part of, Diane, as well, uh, people may not be as familiar with the fact that, of course, a voice actor is an actor, first and foremost. So you're an actress, a novelist, uh, a singer, a film yeah. critic, and uh, you are also a TV writer, a among many, many other titles, I am sure. Uh, but, yeah. of course, as we mentioned before, you are best known for Poison Ivy from Batman the Animated Series. Exactly. Yeah, no, I've had quite a <laughs> quite a hopscotch career life, but it was all because that's what I like to do. I like to do the next thing that interests me. Absolutely. You know? So you yeah. diversify. <laughs> I, I, I guess I do, it's, but yeah. I don't leave the previous thing. I, I try to do two or three t things at a time. Yeah. So, so it's been kind of fun, you know? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And your oh, career yeah. is full of colorful, amazing stuff. It's just like, wow. You know, looking back at your career path it's just been like holy cow this woman has touched everything <laughs> <laughs> and i have the years to show it yes hey, you know no that... i have been around a long time and and i have seen um a lot of different aspects of show business and yeah. literature and so on and so forth and i'm very pleased with you know i can look at my life and say this has been a very well-lived life that is fantastic that you can say that. Yeah. And I would yeah. say that too personally, but for you to feel that 
uh, yeah. level of accomplishment for yourself that means that you've really striven to do what you wanted to do and that you've attempted and, and attained that goal, which is fantastic. So, Aw, thank you. You're so very welcome, Diane. Well, you know, one of the very first things we always like to do on the show, Diane, when we have somebody new uh, on the show, especially for the first time, is to get to know them a little bit just on a personal level. And so okay. tell, tell me about little Diane and how did she grow into the woman she became and how did you become an actress and more specifically, Diane, a voice actress? Wow. Okay. <laughs> little Diane was very shy and had a stutter. Wow. Okay. And apparently I hid behind my mother's skirts and so on. <laughs> and she, she was concerned about me and she took me to this place. I was in New York. I was born in New York and she took me to a little uh, place in Greenwich village called the Henry street playhouse Wonderful. Um, where they had children's classes or something. And I don't know what happened. I, I had to get up on stage there and recite a poem and I think the moment I got up on the stage, I knew I was home. And, and I, it, I almost remember it. Um, and there was a sense at the time that this was my destiny. I was going to, uh, going to be an, an, an actress. And um, from then on, uh, the stutter disappeared. I became, I guess, you know, knowing, filling in inside at what, age five or six? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that... You know what you're going to do. I think it really kind of carried me. And then everything I did after that was was at the theater club at high school and UCLA theater department and uh, summer stock in the summers and dashing right out to hit hit the road. You know, as soon as I graduated, I was on the road with, with Johnny Mathis as a backup singer. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, I mean, really. You know, it's because uh, I'm, I'm a singer, too. So... So I was either singing or acting uh, for years and years, and the voiceovers came up over a couple of things. Um, I was hired to do a little children's television show called Dusty's Treehouse, oh, and okay. I, I, yeah, and I, I did, I, I did the puppets, but I did the voices for a lot of the puppets, and I sang as a lot of the puppets. Oh, that's awesome! And yeah, and that was Stu Rosen, by the way, who who started the um, Dusty Street House and later oh, went nice on to too. direct a lot of uh, cartoons. Oh, wow. um, and then I was also an on-camera actress, and I was doing commercials, and I was at my commercial um, uh, agent's office one day, and this man came by. He heard me talking to the agent and said, come see me after, and I didn't even know who he was. And I went in and saw him after, and he said, have you ever thought of doing voiceovers? And I said, oh, well, yeah, I think I could probably do that, one of those. <laughs> um, and his name was Bob Lloyd, and he oh, wow. he uh, yeah, he yeah also was very important uh, back then. Uh, and for many, many years, uh, he ran a place called the Voice Casters in, oh, yeah. in Burbank. Yeah. And then, um, and then, and he was my agent at first and I got, I got work immediately, uh, as a voice person. I was very lucky. I broke in at a time when they were just starting to decide that perhaps women could be the spokespeople for some products, et cetera. Okay? <laughs> Which is funny because now women, I would say primarily, are the spokespersons for a lot of different companies. For a lot of different things. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's still a kind of a man-woman thing, and there's still, I mean, there's still a lot of the voice of authority has to be a man, and perhaps something sexy for a woman or something maternal <laughs> for a woman. And yeah. once in a while, they'll let a woman be an authority voice. But still, I have seen huge changes. And I, I again, I witnessed it. Yeah. And I was part of it. And it was lucky. And I've made my living. I would say my major living has been from voiceovers with oh, a little fantastic. a little money from book book writing, a little better, a little money from other acting things and so on. Yeah. Wow. Wonderful career. Wonderful background. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for diving into your past and kind of giving us some of your rich history that kind of helped cultivate who you are today. Um, yeah. I find it very fascinating to get to know the individual because it helps us understand, you know, how they got to the places where they are today, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's the same with, you know, Don LaFontaine and, um, all the other wonderful voice actors. May he have, rest in peace. Yes, yes, absolutely. The ones that have passed yeah. on before us. If we don't know our history, if we don't know where we come from, we can't yeah. know where we're going. So exact. Oh, amen. <laughs> 
Well, Diane, one of the things I wanted to talk with you today about is, of course, your role as Poison Ivy. And how did it come about, or was it just a general audition for you to be a part of that wonderful and amazing show that has been such an iconic show for many, many people, uh, probably billions, if not trillions of people at this point, and wow. for you to be the first portrayal of Poison Ivy uh, yeah. outside of the comics, what was that like for you to be the iconic trendsetter of who she was, what she is, how she sounds, how how actresses today probably adapt their characters to an essence of what you created? You know, pure blind luck. I mean, <laughs> again, I, I was uh, Andrea Romano, who was the voice director. Wonderful. They had wonderful. hired me to do a, a couple of small parts on one of the first uh, Batman and I was in the studio, and apparently, I, and I don't know the story, but whoever was supposed to do Poison Ivy couldn't, wouldn't, whatever. And I yeah. don't know if they got a big name or what. I don't know what it was. And she said, you, you want to give it a shot? In other words, audition. And I went, yeah. sure. <laughs> you know, and I looked at the copy, and I said, oh, yeah. Oh, I got her. Because she was sexy and intelligent, oh, right? yeah. yeah. And I used to do a lot of sexy commercials for, you know, <laughs> perfumes and, you know, bras and things like that. Yeah. And then I have a kind of natural intelligence when I talk. I know that I've been told that before. This is not me puffing me up. No, no, no. But you I can sound like a voice. smart person. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I fooled One everybody. One of those sexy anyway. nerd girls. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So uh, I said, oh, yeah, I can do this. And I yeah. auditioned, and they said, you got it. And really, that's how it happened. Wow. What a blessing. And who knew it would become this thing? I mean, really. And she's so iconic. Like, all of the villains to me in Batman the Animated Series are super iconic, from Dr. Crane to Poison Ivy to Mr. Freeze. They're all actors yeah. that have become these epically known. But it was such a trend-setting show because they brought so much of the Batman universe to life. Oh, and yeah. Andrea oh, Romano yeah. is just a, a freaking genius. Yes, and, she is. And, I mean, your whole cast really is, like, what I mean, I grew up loving the Adam West Batman, but I, I don't there was no portrayal of Poison Ivy that I recall in that series. Um, and, and with your character being the first portrayal, it was just it was super iconic. All of the actors that played the villains made those villains come to life in a way that no oh. one had ever seen before. And you really and, are my Poison Ivy. You you are my oh. that whole universe and, of Batman is like my universe. I love it. And those are the voices oh. I hear in my head. So. Oh, and you know what? Recording, uh, again, this was uh, 90, 91 or 92. Yeah. For, I was doing it for about five or six years after that. Um, recording back then, or maybe just by choice, was to get as much of the cast together as possible. Yeah. And we would be kind of in a semicircle uh, so we could see each other, so that we could actually act, meaning we could look at the other person we were talking to. Yeah. And react, and not only were we able to really feel like actors doing some brilliant scripts, by the way, Paul Dini and all the oh, other yeah. people. I mean, seriously, brilliant script. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. But also, that ensemble feeling, I was, I mean, I, I usually stood neck between Mark Hamill and Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. Oh, my God. I mean, I mean on either wow. side of me are these icons. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and all the people that came on as guest stars and stuff, and especially when Arlene Sorkin and I did Har the Harley stuff, Harley and Ivy stuff, I mean, it was such a joy because you weren't just doing a voice into a microphone. You were doing a little play. Yeah. It was just great. Well, the fact that y'all were able to record Ensemble, you know, from everything I've heard, Ensemble is the best way to do it if you can get everyone together because you play off of each other. Your reactions are more realistic. Exactly. It helps exactly. you feel more in tune with what's going on. So you're not just reading it and hoping that what you're saying or whatever sounds good. You know, not that they can't edit it and make it sound good, but you just get better reactions, I feel, from Ensemble recordings. And I wish they did well, more of it today still. I wish they did, too, but apparently, uh, what with the schedules of everybody flying all over the world, and also yeah. the fact that, and this is, you know, kind of important now, that they're using more and more names and less and less just actors who do voice stuff, you know. Yeah. They can't get them all together. Yeah. They can't. Yeah. yeah. The big so wigs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, excuse me. I have I have an appointment with my hairdresser or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I'll be recording from my hairstylist salon. You're like, yeah, what? No, yeah. no. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Uh, you know, speaking of Paul Dini, he actually wrote uh, 
you know, for sure two of the episodes that you were in, but the one that he wrote that I was just watching before the interview to kind of revamp my memory was my yeah. favorite house and garden. Oh, where... that's my favorite. Is it really? Oh, it's awesome. my favorite. I love that. I got to show all the colors of Ivy on that. I love that one so much. It, oh. it grasped me hard as a kid because you see this poison Ivy that's wanting to reform. And in essence, wants it she so really badly. did want it. She did, but she oh. still had that, Henri side in her that she just couldn't let go of and you know and i yeah. love that robin's in that one too it's not just batman uh, it's yeah. robin it's such a great cast of people oh. in that episode and to have you trying you're wanting to reform because even at the end batman's like you know she really was ultimately happy she said it and you know and she's crying on the plane at the end looking at the photo album of the family yes. she had created and she really wanted that and just couldn't attain it you know and no, i think it was because no of her yeah. corrupt past you know um, and, oh yeah and you know. and you know and the fact that the kids were part were came from plants yeah it was crazy I mean, <laughs> then she got she gets both she gets her plant, and she also gets an actual ch child yeah a real person yeah. so she was so happy she yeah. was so happy, and I loved worlds. playing that because I never got to play that, you know. Yeah, yeah. such a so diverse it was, Ivy. It was lovely, yeah. yeah. Well, and it, it's, you know, I mean, I've always loved uh, Poison Ivy, and um, I was actually looking at getting one of the statues that DC created for her because they've done a whole series from the Batman the Animated series of all the different girls, um, yes. all the villains. I think it's a bomb, not the bombshell series, but it's something where they've done the old retro 94 series, 92 series. And uh, I was like, man, I would love to have those busts because Poison Ivy and, and Harley and all of those girls were just done so well. Catwoman, you know, they just, they, yeah. the artistry was beautiful. You know, when they used that black background and then colored on it, it just gave a, a presence and an essence to that show that truly made it like the dark Knight. you know, like made it unlike anything they've ever done. Yeah, that almost, you know, Germanic Im impressionism kind of thing. It's, it's, it wasn't cartoony. Yeah. It was really art. You know, yeah. yeah. It, yeah. it moved away from the Adam West and became the Batman that we knew and loved in the future right. today. So, right. But it was ahead of its yeah. time. Like, oh, Andrea yeah. Romano is a visionary who can see into the future because the stuff that they created and the stuff she's done on other shows, especially, but especially Batman, the anime series, she's just a visionary. And, and I applaud her because she is such an amazing woman with such a great vision who brings in amazing female talents along with great yes. counterpart male talents. And yes. she makes a mixture of voices that just blend like a, a choir because it's she beautiful. knows what she wants and she gets it. She is such a great casting director. She really is. She's fabulous. And I completely, completely agree with you. <laughs> well, and yeah. because you're a singer and I come from a singing background too. I've been singing since I was two years old. You uh, know, that aspect of being a singer, you understand that blending aspect a lot better than somebody that might not come from a singing background, you know? So, Oh, definitely. I use my vocal, uh, my, my singing my how my throat my tongue i yeah. i know you know i know how to use all these things and breathing oh dear oh, yeah. you will never ever hear me take a breath on mic ever wow no seriously because i know how to breathe through my nose instead of my mouth Using when i'm doing the session and, yeah yeah wow. yeah 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 see and there's a lot of wonderful things from singing that really would be helpful in this industry so even if you're yeah. not a singer Take some singing lessons because it might help you in your own career down the road. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree completely. So, yeah. Yeah, but the breathing techniques that you learn in singing are, are essential and probably extremely valuable uh, to the uh, voiceover industry if it's something people look at getting into themselves. So Definitely, definitely. So, Diane, yeah. Diane tell yeah. me some of the projects that you have written for television. What are some things that you've been a part of that maybe I haven't mentioned so far? Maybe oh, well, no, for are... TV, I was actually, I mean, this is one of my dabbling things. I was, I was, I, and I don't want, no, that, that sounds too lightweight. Um, no writing is dabbling. But yeah. I had, I've always written. I had, I wrote poetry as a child. Um, my late husband and I wrote songs together. I wrote the lyrics. He wrote the music. None of them became big. A couple of them were recorded. But, you know, I like, I've always written. Yeah. So I was, um, I decided I wanted to write for TV if I could. And again, blind, sheer blind luck, I <laughs> partnered with a man who had a connection to get us to the love boat. Oh, wow. I love yeah. that show. Well, there we go. And I actually wrote with him. 
Oh, fantastic. A, a, a spec script, and they didn't like the spec script, but they liked us, and please write, try to write some more. So we wrote another one, and they liked it so much, they hired us as staff writers. Oh, great. And we were on, well, I but, and is, this is our show business story, we were there for six months. It was, we wrote several scripts. We, we, we were part of the show. It was wonderful. And then new producers came in and fired everybody. <laughs> oh, man, I hate when they <laughs> yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's show biz, you know. <laughs> and happens. then for a couple of years after that, I wrote a couple of freelance scripts for very forgettable shows, frankly. Okay. Um, and then I stopped writing for TV because I really wasn't that nuts about writing. I knew I still wanted to write, but that wasn't the genre I felt most comfortable in. Okay. And I later on, I started writing uh, ro- romance novels. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> well, you know, as far as your singing goes, do you still actively use your voice for recordings or anything? For any well, TV I still actually or? do voiceovers. I mean, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. Left. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I have wonderful agents have been with me from the beginning, Sutton, Barth and Venari. And uh, I have. Uh, oh, I'm running out on audition still quite a lot. And wonderful. I still work not as much as I used to. I think the voices has aged just enough so that I'm not in that 30 year old voice range anymore. Um, and that's fine. That's fine. It's time for the younger people. You know, I've had mine. Yeah. Um, but no, I still do that. I don't sing that much anymore. Um, I. I still sing for friends, um, and, and I love to, and, and and I'm still pretty good, but uh, I don't have the chops I used to. So you know how you get, you yeah, know, you don't really want to do your not best stuff. You know? Oh yeah. yeah, I understand. Yeah. I understand. Well, Diane, you really have had such a wonderful and colorful background, and you've you've been a part of so many wonderful things and in, involved with so many wonderful people. Um, your career is absolutely full, and it's just so wonderful to get to talk with you today about these wonderful uh, stories and, and about Batman. Do you have anything like a behind-the-scenes story that you could tell us, maybe one that's less familiar to uh, people that have heard your story in the past? What is something from behind the scenes that you really enjoyed the most, besides, of course, standing next to Mark Hamill and uh, Ephraim Zimbalist? I mean, that's unbelievably awesome. <laughs> Well, actually, actually, some of it is that on some of my other shows uh, that I did uh, back for, I think that might have been Marvel, yeah, when we did um, Defenders of the Earth and, mm-hmm. and the new Centurions, um, the cast in that show, th- there was a man, actually he did, uh, when I did Dale Arden um, on Flash Gordon, the my 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 Flash Gordon was a man named Bob Ridgely, who has been gone now for about 15 years, I think. Um, the funniest man I have ever worked with, and also the foulest man I have ever worked with. <laughs> the absolutely wicked, wicked sense of humor. And Pat Fraley, who is still oh, yes. very oh, busy. Yeah. Uh, in the in the in the business, and the two of them and two or three other people would have the cast cracking up so much <laughs> that we had a hard time finishing a session. Oh my! And that was, and we did sixty-five episodes of each of those. That's a lot, <laughs> you know. And yeah. at each one, I came away with tears in my eyes from laughing so hard, and the fact that we were able to. <laughs> The fact that we were able to actually get together and do a show was amazing because they just, they couldn't turn it off. They were yeah. hysterical. <laughs> so, you know, and again, that was ensemble recording, which was such a joy, Yeah, you know. So, no, I, I think that's, that's, uh, that's my fun story. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. No, I mean, the fact that I kind of fell into so many things is, uh, I call it, you know, the serendipity of life. It's... <laughs> It's, you know, you turn a corner and your life changes, or you turn a corner and it's awful. I mean, you never know, yeah. right? Yeah, and but, you really uh, don't. Yeah, it's yeah. It's kind of like throwing the dice in craps. You don't know what yeah, you're going to get. That's right. Just oh, come hope. on, no snake eyes. That's right. Please, please. But, but you have no control, yeah. Yeah, well, Pat Fraley is an absolute hoot. He was on the show uh, a few months back, six months or so, yeah. but he is a hoot. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Honor Very. little guy. I love him to death. He's so funny. Oh. Yeah. But uh, so tell me something, Diane, is there a way for people to reach out to you, social media or a website? How can people get in touch with you, whether they are inquiring about just your career, your life, or maybe they uh, are looking to hire you for a project? Well, 
Um, I'm updating my website, so at the moment, I nobody can uh, email me there. Okay. Okay. Uh, you can always send me a message through Facebook, um, and you can always tr- friend me. But if the the problem is that I have a lot of friends on Facebook, and I don't actually accept the invitation of anyone that I don't know one or two people that are also friends with them. Yeah. You know. People that just come out of nowhere, I, I just don't accept because, I mean, I don't know who they are, yeah. and I don't know what they want. And <laughs> when I'm on my Facebook page, um, and, and by the way, I never did have a separate page for professional Diane and personal Diane, and maybe that was a mistake. But So, so I kind of talk from the heart a lot on my personal page, yeah. which becomes my professional page, so I don't really want strangers, you know, um, thinking, and so that's about the best way. The also other part is my agency is Sutton Barth and Venari in in Los Fantastic. Angeles, okay. and they can always call if they want to do something, you know, through the union. Fantastic. That's yeah. what I like. And uh, but a, a message, you know, on Facebook, a personal message on Facebook will will get to me. Fantastic. Well, you know, like you did, I think. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I did. We had a lot of mutual friends due to the uh, right. the impact and the outreach I've had on the community of voiceover and the activists right. in L.A. that do this. Um, I've been so fortunate. My show is actually fixing to hit a year here on August 5th. And, um, Wonderful. So, Bravo. You know, it's been unbelievably awesome. But um, And you'll be sure to send me the link, please? Oh, oh absolutely. That way you Thank can you. Uh, share it with Thank all you. your family, friends, and fans. <laughs> cool. Will do. Will do. But, uh, you know, it's just been such a blessing. I've gotten to know so many people. By our one-year anniversary, I will have aired 70 episodes, which is unbelievable. Um, wow. And I've just been so blessed and, and fortunate to become a part of the voiceover family, the VO community, um, because I've always had this passion, um, and I turned what I had a passion into a show, and um, I've just been really blessed, you know, and, yeah. um, the advice that I get from the actors has been so educational. I've grown so much in the last year, educationally speaking, uh, from yeah. the knowledge of all these actors, whether they're newbies or n- intermediates or experts in their field. Yeah. Um, yeah. but you know, speaking about advice, Diane, what is, what is some advice you might give to somebody who's looking at joining our crazy world of voiceover for a career path for themselves? The biggest advice I can give is uh, listen, listen, listen to other people first. Just listen to the commercials and listen to the cartoons and so on and so forth. Um, take a class, if you can, from respected people, and that you have to get through the grapevine. I have, I, have, uh, I mean, there's many excellent people in L.A., but I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to go out on a limb and recommend people. Um, um, I understand. But definitely take a class. Um, do not take it lightly. Do not think, I've been told I have a wonderful voice. I'd like <laughs> to pick up a couple of bucks. Because yeah. I get those kind of requests all the time. And they have no idea what's involved, which is it is a terribly, terribly hard business to break into. Yeah. It needs vocal technique. It needs mic technique. It needs acting chops. Um, it needs you to listen very carefully to how you sound and see where you might need some improvement. Um, you might have a sibilance or you might have, I mean, there are things that, you know, take it seriously. And that's the best I can do. And then network, network, network. Absolutely. Because usually you can get to other people through people who know people. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. When, when, I, you, I don't, when yeah. you leave, and when you leave a good enough impression on people, they will talk about you and more people will come to you. And then oh, yes. your network grows and that's how it works. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, Absol- absolutely. Do you, can you, so. I mean, you're in the business too, right? Um, I am not. It? I am no. not a professional voiceover talent myself. I am an I'm a stu- I'm a student of voiceover, um, but okay. I, it is something that I'm working towards. But you're right; it takes a lot of determination and it takes a lot of gumption, and you have to do it no matter what because it's not just going to happen. And oh well, uh, somebody told me I had a good voice. I'm going to do it tomorrow and be on the next Transformers. No, I mean, movie, and so. we do. We are raising a bunch of people who expect immediate results. And, they want it now. Um, they want it immediately. Uh, oh. They, they want it yeah. now, and I know this sounds like the old fart thing, but it's really true. Yeah. You know, it, the fact is it takes a long time. <laughs> and you can hear a story about someone was sitting somewhere and they got, you know, discovered, yeah. and that's very sweet, and that may happen not even 1% of the time. Yeah, like an, an, you know, 
one one thousandth or something like something really I mean, infinitesimal. Seriously, yeah. I mean there are ninety five percent or something like that, or eighty five percent of actors in Screen Actors Guild. I think it's more like ninety or ninety five percent are not earning a living wage each year. Good lord. Okay. Lord. So I am one of the five percent, and so are the successful people that you've talked to. Yeah, absolutely. This is not, not, not uh, a piece of cake. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Diane, thank you for sharing that advice with us. I have one final question for you, and yes. we will wrap this interview up. The question is: What is the legacy that you want to leave behind? You know, it's interesting. I've been doing these Comic Cons lately uh, for the first time. I'm, I'm a little late to the party. <laughs> um, and I didn't realize at the time that I was recording Poison Ivy's voice that I had such a strong influence on so many people. And they come up to me and they have tears in their eyes and they're shaking when they meet me because, I mean, it's not me, it's the voice, but you know what I'm saying. It is you. It, but but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I know what I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're You're not poison ivy, but that's yeah, right. I know that's what right. you mean. Yeah, and and um and, and some of them have had stories that I, lo- I listened to about being abused and and about how the show took their mind off it. I mean stuff like that. And I realized that all these years I've been doing this, I've performed a little bit of a service for people. Oh yeah. And I don't think I ever thought of my voiceover career that way. I was acting. I was getting paid for it. I love doing it. But I don't think I realized the aspect of being helpful to others. I don't think I did, and I'm very, very pleased that I have that legacy. Oh, absolutely. I think the legacy that you've left in the career that you have um, had and continued to have, especially with the character of Poison Ivy, along with all the other myriad of wonderful characters you've portrayed, um, she's left an impact on the world that's never going to go away. I mean, you're the Poison Ivy and, you know, Lauren Lester is Robin. Yes. And, uh, you know, every character that has been portrayed on Batman, f- to me, from the Batman animated series, Kevin Conroy is Batman. He um, is. You know, I mean, I was, I was interviewing someone one time, and they said, you know, every Batman that you hear on film is trying yeah. to be Kevin Conroy. Kevin Conroy, And Kevin I know. Conroy is just Batman. He's just and what Batman. a darling, <laughs> darling man he is. Ugh. You know, I mean, and yeah. everyone, if you listen to their voices, how mm-hmm. do they sound? They very much try to imitate Kevin oh, Conroy. Definitely. He just definitely. is Batman and everyone else tries to be him They could because they want to be right. Kevin Conroy. <laughs> That's right. That's right. But your, Absolutely. your cast of people left a an impact on Batman. It changed the way people think. It changed the way people look at it. And the characters that were portrayed for the very first time in that show forever changed the course of history. Like when Harley Quinn was brought into that series, she is oh. now a part of the Batman legacy that never I existed until that show. I know she is. And she was show. invented. Paul invented her. She's freaking amazing. And I the know. counterpart that she is to Joker makes him so much more sinister because he has a mad love. And I just... It's amazing. They they are just geniuses. <laughs> I know. They really are. Yeah. So, but thank you so very much for your time today, Diana. It has been an absolute honor and pleasure having you on the show. Brenton, thank you for asking me. You are very welcome. Well, Diane, it has been an absolute honor and pleasure having you on the show today. Would you please give us a closeout today as Poison Ivy from Batman, the animated series? Oh, Trenton, thank you so much for asking me. It has been such a joy and a pleasure. Thank you. Hey, everyone. I sure hope you enjoyed today's episode with Diane Pershing, the voice of Poison Ivy. And if you did, please find me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram by searching Who Did That Voice. I would love to hear from you. You know, a question you might ask yourself is, where can I listen to Who Did That Voice? That's an excellent question. You can hear us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, YouTube, and our website at www.whodidthatvoice.co. Click the Episodes tab and listen away. Well, everyone, that's all the time we have for this episode. Join us this Friday for our next special guest, Jared Hewitt, the voice of Disney Channel. You won't want to miss this episode. Hey, do you ask yourself who did that voice? 
Well, if you do, go to our website, www.whodidthatvoice.co, and click on the Episodes tab. Choose an actor, pick their name, and see pictures from the different characters they voiced in their career. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next time for more discoveries on Who Did That Voice.